past the hour. It's time now for the must read opinion page. It's not at the rate we're going now. Well, now let's talk about it. But, we'll well, actually, before we read the must read. So okay. you, you think you think at this pace, you agree with Mark Alpern, let's get Mark in a split. You think at this pace, if this continues, Donald Trump won't get the nomination. I, I agree with Mark Alpern on that. I, I don't think the country is... There's, there's an element of the arsonist to Donald's campaign. <laughs> And the country is not in the mood for that. It's just not in the mood for that. I mean, it, the country needs to be calmed down. The country, it, America, let's make America great again. America is great. Let's make America greater. Okay, but America is great. Mark Alpin, uh, so you have a feeling that uh, this may all get in the way of Trump's march to the nomination? Look, he's the overwhelming favorite for the nomination. I think assuming Not Marco sure. Rubio loses Florida, as I said before, it's going to be up to two guys to show that they can get a lot of votes from voters. It's not about rhetoric. It's not about who people in Washington like or who the Wall Street Journal editorial board likes. Can Ted Cruz, can John Kasich start winning 25, 35, 38 percent of the vote in some of these big states? There are very few winner-take-all states. And if Donald Trump's behavior over the last couple of days and weeks puts a ceiling, that famous ceiling we've long discussed, on his support that is like 35 percent, even 40 percent. He's not going to get a majority of the delegates. And I believe that the Stop Trump movement now, as much as anything, is focused on having a rhetorical case to the delegates mm -hmm. to say he shouldn't be our nominee. Well, Daily Beast, what Bobby Kennedy would say to Trump by Mike Barnacle, Trump's words do not inspire his crowds, they anger. He does not encourage, he aggravates. He's not a bad man. He is just one more public man who thinks and believes that each image of himself in the mirror reflects an individual greatness no one else owns. All those years ago, 48 of them, when America was truly rocked back on the ropes by war, riots, assassination, violence, and a future seemingly wrapped in trauma, Robert F. Kennedy left Indianapolis for Cleveland, Ohio, where he spoke on April 5th, the day after Martin Luther King was killed. Surely, we can begin to work a little harder to bind up the wounds among us and become in our own hearts brothers and countrymen once again. His message, his voice, his attitude, his every appearance and intent were clear. He sought to make America great again. And I think that's what we're looking for right now is where's the positive tone, where's the inclusiveness, where's the message of peace, where's the message of real hope for this country in the Republican frontrunner's <clears throat> words. And instead, it's just where you begin. He just continues to churn it. Well... You know, I mean, this country has been through a lot over the course of its history, and if you measure 1968 against today, today is like, let's get out the party. Hats. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah exactly. It is a, it, yeah. Uh, but, it, and it's, but it's not just Donald Trump. It's nearly all of the candidates, including Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a foundation. And by, the, and, and by the way, Hillary Clinton, who in a debate called... You know, so what enemies are you the proudest of having? And she said Republicans. Mm. True. I, I, I'm not equating the two. I'm just saying there has been a general coarsening of, of rhetoric on both sides through the years. A coarsening of, 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 of Yeah, there's that. But there's also like an isolation that these candidates have from the reality yeah. of people's everyday lives. I mean, they haven't focused enough on what happened in 2008 and 2009 to the vast majority of people in this country. If you didn't lose your house, you lost your hope. You maybe lost your 401k, but you certainly know someone who lost a lot in terms of the economics of their daily lives, and it's never been the same. And the catch-up has been increasingly slow, slower and slower. They can say the economy yeah. is progressing. It is progressing. But, but you know, the, very the, measured instance. The thing is, though, and, and, and it's what I was trying to get to in my piece as well, is so much of this is prepackaged. So much of, of the, 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 the split in America is prepackaged. It's not like 1968, where you did have a world uh, that was being torn apart uh, here this is a political class that's torn apart uh, you know you've got talk radio shows that make money mm -hmm. uh, primetime cable news shows that make money uh, you have everybody makes money on tearing apart you have a gerrymandered Congress where the House members are reelected for getting more and more extreme the system is actually rigged 
to promote mm -hmm. this sort of division. Go ahead, Eddie. You know, I want to push back a little bit. It might not be 1968, but, it's, but it is 2016. And what right. does that mean? That means that you have people who are vulnerable. You have folk who are in the streets protesting around uh, the uh, unseemly death of, of loved ones. You have people losing their homes. You have a sense, right, you have a sense that some people in this country are valued more than others. Mm -hmm. Some people who happen to be white are valued more than others. You have this discourse around undocumented workers. Mm -hmm. People are scapegoating on the, uh, because of the flatlining of their wages. They're scapegoating because houses Tension aren't worth... between police and minorities? Uh, police and minorities. So what, what Donald Trump has done and is doing is tapping into something that is as American as apple pie. There's a wonderful line by James Baldwin where he says, America is like an old minstrel show. Mm -hmm. It's the same song, the same joke. You can do it almost in your, in your sleep. And so there's something dramatically different about now. I wouldn't be here as a country boy from Mississippi if it wasn't yeah. for what happened in 1968. But what we do know is that there are deep divisions in this country. Right. And that there and he's tapping some into them. And some okay, people but in here's the Republican thing. He's tapping, tapping into them. Right. He's tapping into them. He's tapping hard. People are really, really responding. And guess what? Someone like Sarah Palin can tap into those angers. The question is, what can he do with it now? The, I think a lot of people thought, perhaps wrongly, that he could do something with this, that he would then take it a step further and actually rise to the occasion and feel the momentum behind him and the country behind him and start to do more with it in a positive way. Anyone can tap into hatred. That's about the easiest thing to do in the book. You are always going to be able to do business politically in this country by running, and against, fear. By running against the new the different, right. mm. the other. Mm. But what's you know, he going to do? Your enemies, your real enemies. But, at the, but again, at the end of the day, Willie, it's day trading. You yep. can, That's you can it. do it. What it is. You can get, a you can get it. the plurality of uh, the Republican Party. Uh, you can, hell, you can get the plurality of the Democratic Party by, by running a, a, a negative campaign. Um, you know, we talked about it before when you had a third of Democrats that believed that George Bush blew up the World Trade Center. Yeah. You can always play the short game, but that this next step is a massive step, and he does not appear prepared to make the turn and, and game. Well, he's new to politics, and what he's learned over the last nine months is that this works, that these kind of divisions yield results for him in all these states, and they will again tomorrow, right? He'll win yep. Florida. He may even win Ohio. John Kasich has a lead in the new poll there. But he said something before, on Friday, before Chicago. He was in St. Louis, and there were more protesters in that room. And he went on this riff about basically suggesting those people are losers. Go get a job. And to me, that was the exact wrong message. If the whole message of your campaign is to make America great again, to help those people get jobs, to provide for those people, he was saying those people. Yeah. And I think a lot of people took that to mean something. I'm coded. hoping he does more than sell stakes in his victory.